Hey y'all, we are back with upload number two of the day. If you missed the first, we can go on here and go watch it. It was a good one, just like this is about to be. Today we're doing NBA Confessions. It's something we did back in the day, a bunch, where there's an entire Instagram page where I'm pretty sure the way it works is fans DM the, the owner of the page with an NBA confession. So, an NBA opinion that they're kind of afraid for the world to know, but they make an Instagram post about it. It's kind of weird, but it's always fun. So in this video, I will be looking at some NBA confessions and telling y'all if I agree with this unpopular opinion or not. And again, opinion, which means that you may disagree with me on 100% of the things I say in this video. And that's okay. No one's right. No one's wrong. Before we get into it, I gotta do my shout out of the day. So shout out to the homies for supporting yesterday's video. But let's get into this one. The Clippers will make the playoffs this year. Coming to the season, I thought that the Clippers were going to be a playoff team. Yes, they lost Chris Paul, but I figured that Blake Griffin was going to lead this team. And then the pieces that they got back with Chris Paul weren't that bad. Patrick Beverly is one of my favorite players. Lou Will is a guy that's going to fill it up off the bench every day. So I thought, and with Milos Teodosic coming over from Europe, I thought this was a team that could still compete for a playoff spot. And I was right for the first couple weeks of the season. They were one of the last undefeated teams left. But right now, they're on an eight-game losing streak, and they do not look good. Granted that Patrick Beverly hasn't been there for a lot of that time, but still, they just, they, they hit that skid. And right now, I don't think they are, they would be a playoff team. Let me take a look at the standings. So yeah, right now, they're sitting at 13, 5, and 10, a game losing streak, as I mentioned. Again, it's a very early in the season, so they could turn it up and maybe make the playoffs. But in my mind, I just don't see them as a playoff team. The teams that are ahead of him, most of the teams are better than them. I don't think that the Lakers are a better team than them, and I don't think that the Suns are a better team than them, but every other team above them, I think have a better team so no I, I don't think that they're gonna make the playoffs the bulls would have swept the celtics last year if rondo didn't get hurt oh my god all right so the bulls were the number eight seed last season when it gets to boston celtics who were the number one seed we went into boston took the first two games in boston then after that, Rondo go down, goes down with an injury. Then uh, we lose four in a row. So this post is saying, if Rondo don't go down with the injury, the Bulls, we sweep them. Y'all know I'm a Bulls fan, but I can tell y'all right here. I'm a Bulls fan, but I'm, all, I'm always keeping it real. I'm a realist. I'm not going to I'm not gonna let my Bulls fandom cloud my judgment. And even in the moment, before Rondo went down, we took those two games. And in that moment, I'm still thinking... We're not going to win this series. We're not. I was thinking there's like a 20% chance we win this series. Be the, the, that Celtics team was the number one seed for a reason. That team was great. That was a great team. And then, I, yeah, I, I just don't see it, man. I'm a Bulls fan, but again, I try to keep it 100 with y'all. I don't think if Rondo stays healthy, I don't think we win that series for one. But they're saying we sweep it. I don't see it. The Bulls team, we, we barely made it to the playoffs, fellas. Barely made it to the playoffs. That was not a well put together team. I was surprised we took those first two, like the world was. Surprised we did. And after that, it was a downfall. And now we blew it up. Like 80% of that roster is gone now, which is crazy. Um, I don't agree with this one either, man. Victor Oladipo will win most improved player this year. I do think this is true. He's got some competition. Jalen Brown has been balling out. Um, I, but I think he's number one. There are a couple candidates up there for sure, but Victor Oladipo is number one. He was, I, I'm so happy he's hit this spark because when he came into the league, you know, I don't think anybody expected him to ever be like a superstar player. He was drafted number two, but that was in a draft class that wasn't really stacked. So he was drafted number two. And Orlando, he played alongside Alfred Payton. I just don't think it was a good fit. None, none disrespecting Alfred Payton, but you know, just because you're a good player doesn't mean you can put alongside another good player and be successful. You know, it has to it has to jail right. So after that, Orlando, boom, he's in he's in OKC playing against playing with the most ball dominant player in the league. And Victor Oladipo is a guy that kind of needs the ball in his hand to be successful. So no, he was not successful in OKC, but now in Indy, he is it. He can be as ball dominant as he want, and he's been taking advantage of that and having an amazing season so far. So shout out to Victor Oladipo. He is who I think is gonna win. Most approved player this year. And I don't remember who I picked before the season start. But right now, he is the, without a doubt, I think he get 100% of the votes right now. Porzingis. Not sleeping on Porzingis. I forgot. Yeah. He could be. It's between those two. Yeah. It's between those two. Jason Tatum be an all-time Celtic great when he retires. Listen, dog. I get asked stuff like this all the time, whether it be on Twitter, whether it be for our podcast, whether it be in the comment section here. Of people asking me the future of players that have not, you know, they've been in the league. This dude has been in the league for a couple months now. 
yeah, he looks really good. He looks like basically the number one player that was drafted last year. Yes, Ben Simmons is going to win Rookie of the Year, but he was drafted two years ago. He looks like the number one legitimate rookie, not red-shirted rookie like Ben Simmons. He looks great, all right? But there's no way for me to know if he's going to be an all-time Celtic. He may not even finish his, like, he may not be in the Celtics uniform for more than his rookie contract. You don't really know how things are going to go, man. People always ask me, who's going to be the best player in the league five years from now? There is zero percent, like, I have no idea. Nobody has an idea. Will he be an all-time great? He could. He has potential to be, I guess. But I can't answer I can't answer this question. John Stockton's assist and steals record would never be broken. I don't really I don't really know how much above he is from the competitions. So let's take a look at the stat. Okay, y'all. So he's really, really high up there. My God. He's got double the amount of assists that Chris Paul has in his career. And Chris Paul's probably the best passing point guard we've had in 10 years or so. That's crazy. I had no idea he had he had 3,000 more assists than Jason Kidd. That is ridiculous. Man, um, sure, everything is meant to be broken, right? Everything is meant to be broken, but I can't see it being broken anytime soon. Like, only current players on this list is Chris Paul, number 10. He, Chris Paul is not going to accumulate 8,000 more assists in his career. You know, it's not going to happen. He only got a couple more years left in, his, in the tank. LeBron, same way. He's not going to get to 15,000. Darrell Williams is already, like, basically out of the league. Let me take a look at steals. It's a similar situation, man. Jason Kidd needed 60 more steals to beat John Stockton. The only active guy on his list, again, is Chris Paul, and he's down by 2,000 steals. Yo, I, I had no idea that John Stockton was just ahead of the game with these type of things. Wow. Okay. Will it be, ever be broken? I, I'm sure it will one day. Like, everything is meant to be broken, except for Will Chamberlain's 100-point game. Won't be broken, probably. But everything else, it's meant to be broken not anytime soon. Like, not anytime soon. Some guy would have to come into the league, rookie year, average, you know, 10 assists, 15 assists for his entire career, two to three steals his entire career. Like, that's that's hard to do coming in as a rookie, you know? So, it, it could happen, but not no time soon. LeBron is not a top 10 player all time. <laughs> How can you agree with this? Look at LeBron's resume and tell me 10 players whose resume is better. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Uh, no, no. LeBron, in my list, LeBron is number two behind Jordan. He is. I'm keeping it real with y'all. There's no bias because I'm not even a LeBron fan. I just respect greatness. And what LeBron is greatness. He's number two on my personal list. If you think he's not top ten, I don't know what sports you're watching, fam. I, I don't know what sports you're watching. You can hate LeBron's guts. You can hate his guts. But you better respect his game because he's got a lot of it. He's got the most game we've seen since Jordan. All right? So... Y'all tripping. If you disagree with this, you tripping. Wait, if you agree with this, you tripping. My fault. If you agree with this, you tripping. The Chicago Bulls to trade Bobby Portis for Jaleel Okafor. Nah, we cool on that. Just don't really fit. It don't really fit. Jaleel Okafor is the back to the basket. Give me the ball and I'll get you a bucket type big. And even that, he's not. it's not like he's an elite player like that, but that's his, that's his mode, right? And that's just not the way I want my team to run their offense. We got a guy like Larry, we got Laurie Marketing who I want to grow to the biggest he can. And having a guy like Jaleel Okafor may stunt his growth. And then Bobby Portis hasn't looked terrible since he's come back. I think Jaleel Okafor deserves another spot in the league that's not in Philly because he should be playing somewhere. Like some team would like to have Jaleel Okafor. I just hope my Bulls don't make that move to get him. I just don't think it'll really mesh with what we're trying to do. Yes, he's young. He don't play no defense, though. He never really, never show glimpses that he can be a good defender. I'll stay away from that as a Bulls fan. But I'm sure he's, he's got to play somewhere. Derrick Rose still has a chance of making it to the Hall of Fame because T-Mac did it and injuries also ruined his career. Yeah, Derrick Rose could make it to the Hall of Fame right now. Does he deserve to? I don't think he does. Yes, he won MVP. But other than that, he I mean, his, his prime was so short because of injuries. And I think that should play a part. If these couple years of him being a, you know, a six man or coming off the bench as a PG, he can accumulate a ring or something, whether it be in Cleveland or another team next year the year after that. If he can accumulate a, t a ring and actually be a legitimate part of getting that ring i think he can make it to the hall of fame to be honest with y'all i wouldn't be surprised if he, if he retired today i wouldn't be surprised if in a couple years five to six years he makes it to the hall of fame the nba hall of, or the, the basketball hall of fame because it's not stuck it's not strictly nba because european players make it whatever um they're really lenient they let everybody in basically kind of everybody but it don't take much to make it to the to the basketball hall of fame so if he retired today there's a chance he could be today I don't think so, but in the future, he could definitely do enough to get there. Jordan Bale is the next Draymond. 
Y'all, he could be. You don't do you understand why why the the sadness is on my face with me saying that? Because the Bulls drafted him and traded him away for three million dollars. You know what we did with that three million dollars? We used part of it to to buy out Dwayne Wade and we used part of it to give to Rajon Rondo. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave it a like. Again, the support on the channel has been ridiculous as of late. And we make November our month. You know, November has been great for us as a channel. And I, I appreciate y'all so much. Uh, we did drop the newest episode of Through the Wire today. So if you are a fan of podcasts and you like my show and you haven't caught it yet, the link will be in the description. It's on iTunes, all that stuff. It's everywhere except for Spotify. Because Spotify is really picky on who they pick. And they ain't pick us yet. One day we should be there, though. Uh, thank y'all. See y'all tomorrow. Don't really know. Oh, shout out the day question. Give me your N N NBA confession. Something you may not be okay with expressing to the public about a certain player, a certain team, a certain thing in history. All right. Peace.